Hello there. Hello everyone, this is Trafalgar Valentine again. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing very well and if you stumbled by this video by accident and you're just curious about what's his game. My name is Trafalgar Valentine or Vala. I draw in a lot and like majority of people on YouTube, such as Peter Draws, Mark Curley, and lots of other people who like to draw a lot. I'm just one of them, all those guys. I'm from currently in the UK at the moment. It is quarter past eight in the morning. Had a beautiful sunny day. Just chilling out here, first thing in the morning, before I go to work. Have my coffee, have my breakfast. Now I'm just chilling and listening to music. Thought today I'd be talking to you about a particular film that I watched a few years ago. Maybe about two or three years ago, at least, I would say. It's called Fathead. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it before or heard of it or have any particular opinions about it already. Cause it's quite controversial to some people. But for me it changed a lot of things. I, I first started off not doing art itself as sort of my ideal profession in life. I left school with a suggestion of going to personal training maybe or sport instructing and I pursued that for three years at university getting a few sport coaching qualifications so teaching people how to play football, basketball, badminton, rugby and a few other things but I was kicked out after three years because of my learning difficulties so I was basically too stupid to continue. <laughs> anyway, I studied health and fitness for about at least nine, ten years prior to watching this film. I studied it just as a started going to the gym when I was thirteen, fourteen. And you know you pick up the occasional magazine here and there, how to do this and this training method. So I was heavily enthralled in it. I bought four or five books already and magazine subscriptions, Men's Health, Flex Magazine, heavily into bodybuilding, going to a few shows of bodybuilding here and there. I wasn't very good, I never had anyone to really show me what right things to be doing. Everything was sort of experimental, so I never really got anywhere and I found the truth out when I went to all sorts of different places and saw what I really needed to do for it and saw that there was no future for me in it so I stopped but nevertheless when I watched this movie everything I learned about health and fitness including my own self research all the books I'd read, all the lectures I saw, everything became pointless. My education at university seemed worthless. I didn't want to believe it or not. And if anyone asks me about it now, I say I learned what not to do first. I would say I spent those three years learning what was a bad idea first because the ideas displayed in Fathead were not displayed at all in my college university education or the magazines I read and the first books I read were the typical dogmatic ones of the high volume exercises and the Typical bodybuilder's diet of high protein, high carbohydrate, low fat diets. 
that all changed because in fact it introduces the Paleolithic diet and then extending it onto the keto diet as well. These ideas weren't really introduced to me at all, so they're completely new. And such a radical idea. Oh, of course I went searching out for more answers. Because this can't be true. Tom Norton, who made the film, he was sort of a collaboration to supersize me, where he saw a lot of the things that were in it that were kind of wrong. Wherein the technical supervisor of the film was a lawyer who was actually trying to sue McDonald's. So you can obviously see where the motivation was to an end display in the film. But with Tom Norton's film Fathead, likewise, to supersize me, he ate McDonald's every day. But lowered his carbohydrates to less than 50%, but increased his fat intake to over 50% sometimes eating only about 2,000-2,500 calories a day and this high fat medium fat diet over a month period made him healthier the high fat diet he ate at McDonald's every day made him healthier this was something I was never ever taught in any of my health and fitness education how a high fat diet can actually be healthy and when you look at the sugar index of all the carbohydrates for instance the glycemic index of the typical things that we should eat such as brown bread and heavy wheat cereals and stuff have a glycemic index of about 65 that means the percentage of it your body converts into sugar so 65% of brown bread that you eat turns into sugar Sugar itself only has a glycemic index of 65 so it's technically better for you to eat a bowl of sugar than it is to eat bread because the content of it be how it works was basically you can't hold any more than a teaspoon of sugar in your blood so when you eat large amounts of, qual of high complex carbohydrates that basically just gets reduced to sugar your body will reduce insulin to get rid of it it will take the fat into the fat cells and the insulin will lower the blood sugar down to tolerate the large increase of sugar in your system and once it's reduced it down to a safe level of intoxication on the sugar your body will then feel hungry again but if you're on a high fat diet sorry I'm just winging this guy so I'm not really I'm just learning about the top of my head the high fat diet basically when you start consuming large amounts of fat your body doesn't need to produce any insulin to get, break it down because none of it gets turned to sugar but it gets, gets transformed to complex amino acids and into HDL cholesterol which is the good kind and then it's de deconstructed again which is an energy saving process and releases into your body and it makes kind of sense this whole idea about a high fat diet when you look at the Native, Amer Native American Indians were the healthiest people known to man not just because of their amazing abilities not just their amazing power of sight but also because they were the largest and the biggest humans and they ate nothing but buffalo every day it's the same with Eskimos who ate nothing but blubber they don't eat any fruit or veg at all they eat nothing but game hunted meat
I tried this diet for a little bit and once you get into it because I was struggling with the idea at first I thought it was a bit profound of course anyone would so I looked at other researchers and other people at other professions because you don't want to just look at scientists you want to look at other people who have done this diet who are not in it for the funding or the money or anything so I looked at people like Tim Noakes who is a marathon runner he's got some great lectures about it on YouTube Tom Norton eventually introduced his whole family to it so now he's even his kids are doing this diet a high fat diet and they're doing great got people like Jeff Fowler who's a strength trainer coach he basically recommends this diet you got people like Steve Finney he was a he's probably the guy who's been on the diet the longest he's been on it for since I last saw it, it was 30 years I think and because you naturally don't produce any in, well the insulin levels are naturally reduced it's actually a natural diabetic medication as well and because of the high level of energy that you get from the fat your body temperature raises up about two or three degrees as well so it's a great fat burner and because his blood sugar doesn't spike and drop because of the insulin you don't get hungry either I'm going to have to get back on it now the pressures of my weight are getting onto me now I've got a bad appetite problem so it's good for me because when I was on the diet I didn't cut my macros very often but I just ate as much as a fat as I could I think some days I was eating to three to four thousand calories a day and my fat level was about 80 to 90 percent living on butter olive oils and coconut oils cheeses meats eating bacon eggs and stuff like that every day and I lost I was losing an average about three pounds a week and I didn't do cardio very often because I've got feet problems and stuff so it's really worked really well for me I'm going to have to go back on it like I said now the pressures of health and fitness are hitting me again but like I said how much has changed me was because I was never taught it it was such a dramatic change it made everything that I learned worthless and the excitement of this new idea was so powerful that scanning through all of these different scientists I think I must look at about 50 or 60 different kinds of people who had been on it and recommended it uh, Dr Eric Westman I think he's got the new diet called the new Atkins diet which is similar to it where it's a more revised version of the Atkins diet that's more geared towards this and uh, the revised ketogenic diet as well which runs on a macro system of 70% fat 20% carbs no 5% carbs 20% protein I think I'm not entirely sure it's been a while since I've actually looked at it but anyway in that process of learning in about two or three months of checking out all these pseudosciences I had learned more about health and fitness in the space of two months than I had in ten years of looking at bodybuilder magazines Alan Schwarzenegger's training manual all sorts of these crappy bodybuilding magazines and stuff like that that are just designed for promoting supplements and that don't do anything for you even people like um, what do you call him? Uh, Dr. Doug McGuff he's um, a great exercise preneur a guy or well, a great exercise guy basically he recommends a diet as well and there's hundreds and hundreds of people you find it and even the whole country of Sweden is more oriented to it anyway when I found out the truth about this diet system how it wasn't naturally taught in the schools God knows the reason why because it's so much more healthier 
basically I went to see how what else there was what else wasn't I taught and because I learned so quickly I was so confident that if I was properly motivated and if I found something else that was of the equal motivation of equal interest that I could learn it very very quickly and over the years I have found so many new things that are so different than what the dogma of education teaches us is ridiculous that movie really 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 did change everything for me I mean after watching that movie and I learnt so much and I was so interested in it and the diet worked so well for me I mean before I tried all sorts of diets at the period of 10 years of trying things and low carb, low protein, low everything diet, eating only 500 calories a day, exercising all the time and you know, passing out because of lack of food and all sorts of problems and stuff but this diet I was losing weight so easily I was not tired, I was energetic all the time I was just, I felt like I was in beast mode all the time it was amazing and I felt a lot healthier for it I'll put all the links in the description of course so you can go and check it out for yourself because Tom Norton obviously had in the film health checks before and after to prove that his cholesterol was down his triglycerides were good HDL was good, HDL was good, everything was fine and even after completing the film he even continued his diet like I said now his whole family is doing it I went after learning this I went on and discovered Terence McKenna his amazing lectures on psychedelic drugs and ethnobotany alchemy UFOs learned the wonderful truth about where the education of drugs was all completely muffed up since I didn't have any education on drugs at all I think in my school year I think I had two sex ed classes none about drugs and the rest was all the usual pish of history, maths, English and science which don't really did any good for me anyway and then I learned about Rupert Sheldrick and his interest in perceptions on memory, morphogenic fields then I learned about Ralph Abraham of course with these trilogues from Terence McKenna, Rupert Sheldrick and Ralph Abraham learn about his chaos theories and then I move on to Graham Hancock and learn about his history theories of heaven's mirror and how the stars are represented in the sky and magicians of the gods got that book afterwards and so fascinated by all the history that Graham Hancock like was went out there um, hundreds and hundreds of people over the years Bill Donahue from Hidden Medians he's translated the Bible into a psychology kind of manual it's quite interesting I recommend that all this intellectual interest that I got happened so quickly and so fast and I realized that I'd been taught my entire life that learning was difficult learning was hard and it was unmotivating and stuff and I just keep at it and keep pushing and stuff like that and this is and then I learned about the diet and then this is the the my old diet version anyway this is the correct way this is what you should be learning everyone should be doing this everyone was doing the same stupid diet all around me but then after that I learned so quickly in such a short amount of time it was ridiculous and like I said I wasn't just learning a crappy idea from one person just to promote an idea I was learning from getting opinions from hundreds of different people so that I can have a generalized opinion about everything so if a hundred people said yes from a hundred different kind of professions and you know it's more legit 
So that really, really helped me. And there's everything out there that is different than what you think. All the pseudoscientific ideas. It's been very, very difficult to me find any kind of subject that isn't enthralled with the dogma. And it kind of makes me kind of worried about the education today. We're not even teaching our children the right ideas about memory, telepathy, UFOs, drugs, sex, fast food industries, everything. One thing that was actually interesting now that I remembered about the film was it proved the lipid hypothesis wrong. <laughs> as well as the BMI system, which is quite obviously wrong. BMI system was a development for health that was devised in 1986, I think, if I can remember off the top of my head. It basically determines your weight to height ratio and how healthy you are. But <laughs> if someone's naturally born with an extra 10 pounds of muscle, the BMI system will say they're 10 pounds more heavier and overweight and 10 pounds more closer to being unhealthy. It won't actually recognize what part of the body is 10 pounds heavy at all. It's, it's a system that's, what, 20, 30 years old now? And we're still using it today? 30 year old systems? For health and fitness? Hmm. As well as a lipid hypothesis, which says that... Hmm, I think I've dropped bed now. Basically, the more fat you eat, the closer your risk to heart disease you get. It was developed in the 50s, and it's been proven wrong hundreds and hundreds of times. Yet it makes up 95%, I would say, of our modern culture. 95% of our modern culture for our food industry is made up of a lie from the 50s. 60 years ago, and we still teach our kids it. Now you've seen the development of games and the development of the countries and all sorts, how much can really develop in 60 years? So why haven't we developed our perception on fast foods, high fat foods? Of course not all fatty foods are healthy. You can't naturally get soybean oil and vegetable oil. It's more natural to have beef towel, healthy olive oils, healthy natural butters, healthy grass-fed beef. If you look at the idea of evolution, agriculture was invented maybe about 10,000 years ago. Some people were wandering around eating fruits and seeds, and they wander around in cycles around the year to follow the cattle around and stuff because from the cattle they get every bit of resource that they need for the camp so and when they w would come back in patterns the next year they came around to find the seeds that they'd spat out to grow trees and plants and all sorts of different foliage then after experimenting with the ideas of trying to grow plants and stuff they eventually found out they could grow crops and then they discovered that all these starving people in the wild aren't going to want these crops for food. So they built towers to guard them. And they had to build armies to put in the towers to guard the towers. And then they had to put generals to command the army. Then they had to build houses and barracks, stores, shops, armories, weapons. And eventually culture developed. Cities developed, you can just see the, it developing into wooden castles, to stone castles, to modern fortresses today. Agriculture invented the protection of modern societies today. And probably the development of the first world culture, which unfortunately I am in, but I'm kind of happy to be in at the same time, probably was from the group of the very first people who tried it. And we've been hunting and eating meat for about 
I would say at least 10 million years at least maybe even before then easily so what would you think our body is more naturally adapted to if you go out into the wild how how long do you think you would live on a vegan diet if you go out into the shrubbery or into the wild what kind of food do you think you could find do you think you'd find some nice delicious salad leaves or in th some nice vegetables or do you think you could find maybe a nice juicy bit of pig running around what do you think you'll survive more on I don't know people I don't know what to talk about today I just thought I would share that little moment for you guys because it's very interesting and it taught me a hell of a lot and it's quite fun because I've seen a lot and lot of progression in a lot of different industries and it is a growing trend it's one of those things that's going to be growing faster and faster like I said there's places like Sweden which run out of butter for example that are all on board for it and now there's going to be start educational classes to help whole families do it a nice healthy high fat diet it's already been proven how good it is for kids development of natural healthy fats non-processed sugar whether they wouldn't get hunger tantrum tantrums they didn't want to cheat on the diet and stuff and eat lots of sugars and stuff like that people like Gary Taubes that's another good person I can remember now he was another pioneer and I think he wrote the book good calories bad calories and he basically found out though all these systems say that of the calorie deficit and how much you should really burn calories per day and things and everybody says what you should do with your body what should your body do with the calories that you put in although yeah you might only have 1100 calories a day but what is your body going to be doing those 1100 calories just digest them but where's the digest too if you have 1100 calories of fat you know that's not going to hang on to your fat because you don't have any insulin so this is going to run straight off you but if you have carbohydrates your body's going to struggle to reproduce those spike up your blood sugar you're going to get really really hungry really fast and it's just going to run straight out of you you're not going to store any energy it's quite literally just getting a jolt of electricity instead of getting a full battery I like my doodle guys anyway while well, I'm waffling on it's a book that I got from my mother for Christmas and I thought I'm enjoying it for a bit so I thought I'll start drawing it again I've been watching lots of Peter Draw videos so and he's drawing his sketchbook all the time why not try it I did a picture last night I can find it ah there we go I'd like that just a little doodle I did last night Where was I? I think I was around here. I have just a bunch of colours next to me, so I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Anyways, guys, I just thought I'd share that moment with you. The moment where my entire education changed in one single day from one single film. And I learned everything I learned in school was wrong. Everything I learned in my three years at university was wrong everything I learned in my magazines and stuff was wrong I mean fair enough people survive on do well on carbohydrates diets I'm not saying that they're completely wrong but it was just the fact that this idea was never brought up it was never discussed it was never an option for me when I was younger when I, when I was taught when I was learning about diets and stuff like that no one ever mentioned it to me in school no one ever mentioned it to me in 
my college university or anything like that it was always oh you want to lose weight drop down your calories and drop down your carbohydrates and always have low fat and stuff like that that was always the way it was never different it was never trying everything new I mean some people do really well in high carbohydrate diets I mean the Chinese people probably for example they grew up on rice before we grew up on bread so they could tolerate carbohydrates a lot better than us or some people in the Caribbean probably had more access to fresh fruits so they probably could tolerate high fructose um, fruits than us I mean but I mean we British it's a bit more difficult to grow fruits and the vegetables and stuff we grew didn't really come into our country at that time so we're more accustomed probably to the more meat diet so it just depends on what works for you and I found out that I struggle to digest carbohydrates and I'm now going to stop them completely and go on my nice healthy high fat diet and hopefully lose some more weight I might keep updates about how well it goes my record was zero carbohydrates for six what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah. The longest I went on this high fat diet for myself was six weeks. And Gary Tobbs in his in his numerous shows and stuff, it says it takes about twelve to two weeks to actually adapt to it, because you got to get all the carbohydrate systems out of your body so your body can fully use the fat, which is perfectly normal. I mean, if you're trying any particular diet, especially one that's as strong as this. <laughs> it's not going to work in a single day you it becomes a lifestyle choice and you have to stick to it and probably the minimum I would say for it is probably a month and after a month if you want to go back to your regular diet I would be very very surprised but nevertheless that's for some people after I mean the first few days it's quite difficult of course because your body is dependent on carbohydrate and you haven't got any so you feel very drained very lack of energy sometimes you can get headaches and feel sometimes a bit of sickness with the amount of fat you're eating but I mean you can count with that with all sorts of different things such as excess water drinking adding gravy to like a variety of your meals so if you have a nice steak and cheese or something add lots of gravy can help so it's like heavier salted because on this diet Steve Finney who's an excellent doctor said that your body actually dumps salt so, you buy, so basically an excess amount of salt is good for you and also I learnt that your body will naturally take everything it needs from fat so I mean I lived on one week of 100% fat diet one type of fat which was butter every day for a week and I never felt any anything bad about it I felt like I got everything I needed I got no nutrition deficit I lost about three pounds that week I was eating about 3,000 calories a day about two or three blocks of butter a day and it was amazing and the funny thing is that you start slowly reducing the amount of vegetables and and fruit that you can actually even tolerate fruit for example becomes so sweet because it's some so carbohydrate sensitive that you can't even eat it and vegetables things like tom tomatoes and carrots become so sweet they can't even tolerate them but then you eat something like lettuce and broccoli it tastes just like a a mars bar or something like that it's ridiculous and like ooh, shouldn't even be eating this and my energy levels were amazing even if it was late at night I would still be bursting with energy all the time it was great fun and I really want to get back onto it but it's really difficult cutting out carbohydrates completely is like trying to cut smoking and I'm just not joking about that even to be including do try and cut uh, equivalent to people trying to cut heroin as well because it's such a dependent drug I feel white sugar is an, a very very powerful drug and if you really don't believe me if sugar is a drug and it's just a, something for <coughs> food basically or whatever you want to call it a food supplement then try and cut out carbohydrates for a month I dare you and if you don't feel like after the first few days that you 
desperately need sugar and you become like a crack addict because of it then don't tell me that I didn't warn you you will find ways of trying to get sugar into your system that you and it reveal the bad part of your nature it gets to the point where I was that desperate for sugar at one point or that sensitive to sugar even that I could feel like I could smell it in the air Working in a fast food industry for a living does not help at all, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> no idea where this drone's going, but I'm sure I'm about to have fun with it. Nice fun designs. Gotta go to work soon, so I'm gonna finish up shortly. Hope this, uh, this video, it liked watching me draw in real time. I know it's better for some people to watch in real time. And so you can see how the process is. And I hope this is a little talk, my little ramblings about health and fitness were actually helpful. I'll put some links in the description to some of the things that I said. Because I think if you can really change your lifestyle and help yourself a hell of a lot if you go into a high fat diet, you'd be amazed at the results that you have. And don't be scared about what the dogma says, what all these magazines say, how unhealthy it is and how it raises cholesterol and all that stuff. Nonsense. Watch Fired and you'll see. Got some interesting scientific facts. And if you say, oh, it's just a pseudo-scientific idea, and just they've hired a few people to mention it, the scientists in there, because there's about five or six PhDs and stuff, <laughs> have a look on YouTube, and you'll find hundreds and hundreds of people that are on this diet. Not just scientists, but professional athletes, guest speakers, normal family members, and they found the wonderful benefits of benefits of it. You don't have to go extreme like I did with the butter. <laughs> That's just because I'm a little bit higher on the food chain, I would say, than most people, which probably makes me my appetite problem <laughs> probably explains that. Where I can eat a lot of things but people wouldn't. And I can mix a lot of things but people wouldn't as well. I'm a little bit optimistic when it comes to food, so eating Gross food doesn't really bother me at all. It's a bit of annoying that was I was actually a bit of a reputation I actually had in some of my my previous employments where they would get me to actually eat ridiculous things, and there was oh well <laughs> I thought it was funny at the time anyway. Eat a, I remember a few of them was like drink a a small milk jug of cream, salt and pepper warmed down eat a few live mealworms <coughs> swallow them whole, no problem 15 raw eggs down in two, no problem Drink a full pint of spirits, top shelfer, seven attempts, three back up, down. <laughs> anyway guys, this is enough of my rambling for health and fitness. I might probably do some more to this picture off camera, but just as the camera permits, I just thought I'd let you see some of the progress of it and how the start bit was coming in. Might do some nice thick black lines across here, you know? quite simple ideas, but... If anyone's more interested in knowing how I actually did it, you can always leave a comment below or something, or if you've got any questions or anything, you can check out my pin interest, Facebook, and DeviantArt profile, and other stuff to follow me. Also, check out some of my crafts on my Etsy shop, and check out my main crafts on my web website, TrafalgarValentine.co.uk. And I hope you have a nice day, guys. And Thanks so much for watching and I hope my little rambles are not too boring for you. 
I've got a lot of things I would like to say about a lot of stuff. Not just about health and fitness, which is what I used to study, but about a lot of things that I've learned over my intellectual journeys. I think it might help you. If not in your life, but just open your mind a little bit. Well, thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.